Eric Magidson here. Today we're going to talk about the Excel payment function. I'm going to do this in Excel 2007, but it certainly applies the same way in Excel 2010. So the payment function is basically a function where we have an amount that we're going to borrow from a bank, in this case 8,000, at an annual percentage rate, APR of four and a quarter percent, over a three year time period. And of course we're going to work through a couple more of these as well. Uh, but basically, imagine if more people before signing up for those home loans a few years ago had had this information and could plug in different interest rates, as I'm going to do for you, and see what happens to their payments uh, for, you know, for say a home loan. So let's start with a real basic loan, though. Here's eight thousand, four and a quarter percent, three years, and we're going to calculate first and foremost the monthly payment. Now the monthly payment is is important because you need to know is that something I can afford as an expenditure each month but more importantly is to understand how much you're paying in total for a loan and how much interest because of course there's an opportunity cost that you're giving up giving the bank that interest you could have saved that money or done something else with all of that money so simply put there's an easy way to do the payment function we don't need to start by saying equals payment. We can come up here to the auto sum function, come to more functions, that's one way to get there. Or we can come to formulas and functions here, come to financial, and come down to the payment function, PMT. Notice there's a PPMT and PMT. We're looking for PMT. And I'm gonna leave that right there. Now, until you get really good at this, I highly encourage you to use the function arguments box here because it gives us information about the function. You know, first of all, the function calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. Well, we have constant payments, those are monthly. We have a constant interest rate, that's four and a quarter percent. Now, before we go any further, let me move this down here and Let's look at what an APR is in case you don't know. An APR is an annual percentage rate. That's how much you're going to pay over a year in interest. But if we were figuring out monthly payments, we have to take that annual percentage rate and find a monthly percentage rate. And we do that by taking the APR divided by 12. Now, of course, there's other ways to pay. We can pay monthly, we can pay quarterly, we can pay bi-monthly, we can pay semi-annually. In this case, I've also got some for you to do quarterly, so we would take the APR divided by four. That's gonna give us a quarterly interest rate. Finally, I have time in years. Now, when you go borrow money from a bank, they tend to show that to you in months, but I think it's important to understand how to do it in years, uh, you know, a four-year loan. And basically, what we need to do is turn those years into months. So we would do number of years times 12 months. That's gonna give us a monthly payment. Or we can go ahead and do number of years. Let me get rid of this. Number of years times four for those quarterly payments. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna bring back up that function. There's our function arguments box. I'll cover the quarterly and we'll get started. So our rate is the interest rate per period for the loan. Remember, our period is monthly. So we're gonna take the rate, and notice I don't ever put in any static values. And the reason being, I want these functions to be dynamic. I wanna be able to make changes in my variables and have my payment change. If I was to put in four and a quarter percent manually, that would always be four and a quarter percent, no matter what the value is in the cell. So I'm taking, Whatever is in B3, in this case divided by 12, that over here gets me a monthly interest rate. Number of periods. So this is the total number of payments for the loan. Well, we know that we're gonna have the loan for three years and we're gonna make 12 payments a year, i.e. monthly. So consequently, 36 months. <laughs> Finally, present value, and there's one thing that I wanna really stress here. Our present value is simply the loan amount that we're borrowing today, present value. And I wish they'd just say this. They say present value is present value, the total amount that a series of future payments is worth now. Well, simply put, that's how much we're borrowing, in this case, 8,000. 
Now, if you notice here, um, that gives us a negative because it's an expense, and accountants like to see expense and negative. That gives us 237. Now, we know that it's easier to work with positive numbers as we go through the next steps. So simply put, all we need to do is put a negative in front of that. We get a negative times that expenditure negative, and we get a positive value. So in this case, our $8,000 loan at 4.25% interest over three years gives us $237.08 a month payments. So now we want to calculate the total amount of the loan. Well, that's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is say equals our monthly payment times, now we can even, we could do months, but I'm going to go ahead and keep that same consistency. I'm going to do three years times 12 months, that would be 36. So it's going to take 237.08 times 36, essentially, and tell us that we are paying for the use of the bank's money, we're going to pay back $8,534.97. So what is that? That's our initial amount borrowed plus the interest. So to calculate the interest paid, we just come here. We'll say equals the total amount of the loan minus the amount we borrowed. And we can see we paid $534.97 in interest. Now let me do one more loan. Let's say that this was a home here. We're borrowing 224,000 after making any down payments or whatever. At 4.95% for 30 years. Let me go into the payment function the other way. I can go more functions. Here I can type PMT and go. I'll say OK. So what's my rate? My rate is 4.95% divided by 12 because I'm still doing monthly. If I was doing quarterly over here in the right column, this would be divided by four. I'm not gonna do one of those for you. I want you to figure that out on your own. Number of periods, this is 30 years. For 30 years, every month, for 12 months, we're gonna make a payment. Again, if this was quarterly, we would take our 30 years times four because we would make four payments a year. Our present value, Remember, I put a negative in, so I get a positive value back just to keep my math simple. And if you notice, if I did it right, it gives me results as I do each step and down here. We'll talk about future value and type in another video. So for this house, I'm going to pay $1,195.64 a month each month for 30 years. So to figure out the total amount of loan, I'm going to take my monthly payment times, and again, I want to keep this, oops, my monthly payment, times, and I'm going to keep this constant by saying 30 years times 12. This again would be 30 years times 4 if I was doing quarterly payments. To find out that the total cost of this $224,000 home comes out to be $430,000. So let's go and figure out our interest by taking the total amount of the loan minus how much we borrowed, and we found out that we paid, yes folks, $206,000 in interest. Now where people got themselves into trouble in the housing market is they did interest only loans. So basically all they were paying on this initial principal was the interest each month. They weren't paying down the principal over the 30 year period of time. They did that at interest only for five years. Now here was the problem. Suddenly these interest rates, because people were defaulting on loans, these interest rates were gonna skyrocket. So instead of four and a nine, five percent, these might have went up to say six and a quarter. So let me just go in here real quick and change this to six and a quarter percent and let's see what happens to my monthly payment just by increasing it what seems like a little bit. Let's look at the payment, let's look at the interest as soon as I press enter. So look, $1,195 is now $1,379 and notice that our interest rate went to $272,000. In some cases, people couldn't afford the additional amount on their home. I'm gonna do undo so we can get back to that number. Notice we went from 206,000 to 272,000 in interest. 
and 430 to 496 on the total loan. So folks, this is where people got in trouble. There's one problem now. Now if you go out and get a loan without calculating this and really understanding this, it's simply your own fault. I hope this helps you with the Excel and more importantly, helps you with a valuable life skill. Take care.